Hi everyone, and welcome back to the MFT YouTube channel. It's Carolyn here, and I'm popping in today to share a video tutorial for creating the confetti flinger mechanism. It's a super fun way to add some great interactivity to your cards and provides a sweet surprise to the recipient. You won't need protective eyewear for this, but you'll definitely be surprised when you open up the card. So let's get started, shall we? To create my project, I'm using several of the dies from the Blueprints 26 Dynamics, the A2 Stitched Rectangle Stacks Set 2 Dynamics, the Confetti dies from the Balloon Shaker Window and Frame Dynamics, and two of the sentiments from the Handwritten Happiness Stamp Set. I'm also using some black licorice, smooth white, and ripe raspberry cardstock, as well as some translucent vellum, and one of the patterns from the Tiny Hearts Brights 6x6 paper pack. I used some Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock to create the confetti flinger mechanism because I found that it was sufficiently sturdy enough for the action and tended not to crack when folded. But any cardstock that's 80 pounds or higher will work just fine for this technique. I started off with a 6 inch by 2.5 inch panel that I scored at half inch and 2 inches on the long edges of the panel, and then at 3 quarter inches, 2 and a quarter inches, 3 and 3 quarter inches and five and a quarter inches on the short edge of the panel. I've noted the scored areas on the screen so that you can take a screenshot for future reference. I also wanted to mention that I didn't invent this technique. It's been around for many moons and there are several ways to create this mechanism. I actually combined a couple of different tutorials that I found online to create my mechanism. Now that I finished the scoring, I'm using my detail scissors to cut away the small rectangles at the two short ends of the panel, as well as angled cuts at the scored center lines to create tabs. It's super simple to know where to cut because the score lines provide our guides. And obviously, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a way to create tabs that will fold easily and won't add a lot of bulk. What you'll end up with is a long panel with eight tabs, three on each of the long sides and one on each end. Now I'm adding some quarter inch double sided tape to the inside of each of the six side tabs. These tabs will give some added stability to the mechanism once it's all assembled. I'm using double sided tape because I find it to be not as messy as other adhesives. And I know that once I stick it together, it's stuck for life. But feel free to use your favorite adhesive or whatever you have on hand. Now I flip the panel over and I'm adding more quarter inch double sided tape to the two ends of the mechanism. I've used two strips on each tab because the mechanism gets a lot of torque when it's locked and loaded. It's more critical here to use a super strong adhesive so that you know once it's adhered to your card, it's going to stay in place. Again, you can use what you have on hand, but in my opinion, a strong double-sided tape is your best bet for the two end tabs. I'm removing the release paper from the side tabs adhesive with my tweezers, and I'll fold them towards the inside of the mechanism. I'll do this for all six of the side tabs, rubbing them firmly with my thumbs to make sure they're good and stuck. You could also use a bone folder to make sure the tabs are adhered together well. But here, my trusty thumbs did the trick. If you look at the mechanism now, what you're left with is three one and a half inch squares and two three quarter inch tabs. I'm using the one eighth inch hole punch on my crocodile to punch a half circle on both sides of one of the end tabs and then again at the bottom of the second one and a half inch square. This will create four notches that we'll use for the rubber bands. I've trimmed a two inch square of vellum and I'm placing the points of the square between the one and three eighths inch and one and a half inch mark on my scoreboard. I'm scoring the vellum at three quarter inches and two and an eighth inches. And then I'll flip the square and repeat the score marks so that a perfect square is scored in the middle. Then I'll fold on the score lines bringing the points of the square into the center. What you're left with is a one and a half inch square. It's a good idea to bend the tips on the fold lines a couple of times to loosen the vellum a bit. This will help the confetti release when the mechanism is triggered. And I should mention that if your points don't meet perfectly in the middle, that's totally okay. We're not looking for perfection here, just a place to hold the confetti until it's released. I created a graphic to show you the score, fold, and cut lines for both pieces of the mechanism. If you want to take a screenshot for future reference, now would be a good time to do that. 
Next, I'm adding three strips of quarter inch double sided tape to the second square. This is where we'll adhere our confetti pouch. Make sure you're putting the adhesive on the middle square and that you're doing it on the front side of the mechanism, so the side without the folded tabs on it. Once the adhesive is in place, remove the release paper and adhere the vellum pouch. Make sure that the flaps of the vellum square are face up. Now you can fold on the score lines to create the shape of the confetti flinger. Next, I need to create the band for the mechanism. I'm using two medium sized hair bands that I had on hand. If you don't have any on hand, you can find these kinds of hair bands at the dollar store. Gotta love that dollar store, right? I've looped the two bands together to create a longer band and I'll wrap the bands onto the flinger, placing one loop at the top tab notches and the other loop at the middle square notches. The band should be on the back of the confetti flinger, so on the same side as the folded tabs. And then you can see that I'm giving the band a little tug to stretch it out a bit. When the bands are new, they're a little too tight. This will help stretch them out so that they release without breaking. Now we can create the rest of our card. I kept the card elements pretty simple and did the die cutting off camera to focus on the confetti flinger mechanism. I trimmed a four and a quarter inch by five and a half inch panel from smooth white cardstock and added a stitched edge with the A2 stitched rectangle stack set to dynamics. I'm stamping the Make-A-Wish sentiment from the handwritten happiness stamp set onto the panel with black licorice hybrid. And I do this twice to get a darker impression. Next, I'm stamping the happy birthday sentiment also from the handwritten happiness stamp set onto the inside of an A2 top folding smooth white card base. Again, I do this twice to get a darker impression. And with my Misty, this repetitive stamping is a breeze. I can't imagine my crafty life without my Misty. I adhered a strip of patterned paper from the Mini Hearts Brights 6x6 paper pack to an A2 panel of smooth white cardstock, and I die cut it using the partial balloon die from the Blueprints 26 Dynamics. I also added a stitched edge using the same stitched rectangle die from before. I'm adhering it to the image panel using foam squares, and then I'm adhering the bow and the string for the balloon with a glue pin. These are just a few simple details, but it's these details that bring the whole card together to create a cohesive design. Next, I die cut some confetti from Smooth White, Black Licorice, and Ripe Raspberry cardstock using the confetti dies from the Balloon Shaker Window and Frame Dynamics. I'm adhering some of the confetti to the front of the card with a glue pen. And yes, it's tedious, but again, I truly think these small details make a world of difference in your finished project. And now, I can adhere the image panel to the card base with some foam squares. And we're almost to the finish line, so hang in there with me for just a bit longer. I'm removing the release paper from the end tabs on the confetti flinger mechanism, and you can see that I've folded the mechanism so that the confetti pouch is at the bottom, and that the two end tabs and the third box are folded towards the back and are laying flat. Now I'm adhering the mechanism to the inside of the card, making sure to position it so that when I lock the flinger in place, it won't get caught up in the top fold of the card base. I found that if I position the flinger so that the bottom edge of the mechanism is about a quarter inch from the bottom edge of the card base, I have plenty of room to lock the mechanism in place. I'm filling the confetti pouch with several pieces of confetti, about a half a teaspoon or so is plenty, and then I'll fold those vellum flaps over so that the confetti is safely enclosed. And now I can press the flinger mechanism up into position and fold the front of the card base to keep it in place. And then I quickly insert the card into an envelope. The best part of this confetti flinger is the amazing shock and surprise when you pull the card out of the envelope and are showered with the colorful confetti. I just love that sense of surprise when it happens. And here's what it looks like in slow motion. Isn't it a hoot? I think this confetti flinger can be used for many different occasions and I can't wait to see what you create with it. Thanks so much for watching my video today. Be sure to check out the other videos on the MFT YouTube channel for more great content. And until next time, have a fabulous day.